In our final section of the lecture, let's talk about the disease management. In this uh, section, we will discuss the differential diagnosis of uh, tularemia and the lab diagnosis, how we can perform the diagnosis of the tularemia in the lab, and what's the treatment options available, what's the prognosis of the tularemia, and how we can prevent this condition. Differential diagnosis of tularemia. Confirmatory diagnostic testing uh, include oropharyngeal tularemia differentiated from pharyngitis. So these are some differential diagnoses. So oropharyngeal should be differentiated from the pharyngitis. Identify contact with potential animal vector. 40% patient have no known history of contact, skin lesions of tularemia, regional lymphadenopathy. So very important in oropharyngeal type of tularemia, it should be differentiated from pharyngitis. And in that case, important is if there is history of any contact with the animal vector, which is usually the biting and blood sucking insect are the vector. So if there is history, then we should uh, look for that and that gives the idea that it might be oropharyngeal tularema. But mostly the history is uh, absent and no history is present in 40% of the cases. And if there is uh, inoculation of uh, the, uh, the organism through the skin, uh, there is usually ulcerative skin lesion is present and there is also regional lymphadenopathy. Pulmonary tularemia may resemble any atypical type of pneumonia. Pulmonary uh, tularemia cause is known as uh, pneumonia tularemia or pulmonary tularemia. It can be any atypical type of pneumonia. It resembles with that. Typhoidal tularemia and tularemia meningitis may resemble variety of other infections, so we need to differentiate between the different conditions. In children, the differentiation of tularemia from cat scratch disease made more difficult by chronic papulovesicular lesion associated with Bartonella henselli infection. So in children, it needs to be differentiated from the cat scratch disease, and it is more difficult to differentiate as a result of the presence of papulovesicular lesions, and it is associated with Bartonella henselli infection. Now, tularemia differential diagnosis by clinical disease category, glandular, oropharyngeal, typhoidal, and pulmonary tularemia. Glandular should be differentiated from pyogenic in bacterial infection, non tuberculous mycobacterial infection, sporotrichosis, tuberculosis syphilis, anthrax, rat bite fever, scrub typhus, plague, lymphogranuloma, venarium, cat scratch disease. Oropharyngeal type should be differentiated from group A streptococcal pharyngitis, uh, arcanobacterium hemolyticum pharyngitis, diphtheria, infectious mononucleosis, and various viral infections. Typhoidal type should be differentiated from typhoid fever, other salmonella bacteremia, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, human monocytotrophic uh, early theosis, 
uh, human granulocytopenic anaplasmosis, infectious mononucleosis, brucellosis, toxoplasma, tuberculosis, sarcoidosis, malignancy. Pulmonary type should be differentiated from mycoplasma, pneumonia, pneumonia, chlamydia, pneumonia. So different atypical type of pneumonias needs to be differentiated from chlamydia, mycoplasma, legionella, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidiomycosis, and various viral infections. So all these are the different differential diagnostic conditions should be differentiated from the different types of trilaremia, glandular, oropharyngeal, typhoidal, and pulmonary. Lab diagnosis is uh, uh, by agglutination testing, microagglutination and tube agglutination. False, false negative serologic responses are early in infection. Enzyme-linked immunosorbate assay. So all these are the lab diagnostic by the agglutination test. A variety of PCR polymerase chain reaction tests are also used for the lab diagnosis, detect Francis Tolerance's DNA, 16S R DNA sequence identification PCR may be helpful. Culture and isolation of Francis Tolerance's is difficult. Slide agglutination test or direct fluorescent antibody test. Treatment of uh, tularemia, uh, aminoglycosides, tetracyclines, chloramphenicol, rimfampicin, gentamicin for both adults and children for 7 to 10 days, streptomycin given intramuscularly. Duration of streptomycin therapy in adult and children is about 10 days. Doxycycline, there is risk of relapse with doxycycline. Fluoroquinolones, ciprofloxacin, and levofloxacin. Standardized antimicrobial susceptibility testing Third generation cephalosporin active against Francis Tolerances. Uh, Imipinem may be active. Hearing screening should be considered. Relapse uncommon with streptomycin or gentamicin therapy. Late lymph node suppuration in 40% of the children. Prognosis of the condition mortality rate is from severe untreated infection is about 30%. So un severe untreated infection have a high mortality rate, about 30%. Overall mortality rate for untreated tularemia is less than 8%. With appropriate treatment, mortality rate is less than 1%. Poor outcome is associated with delays in diagnosis and treatment. Lifelong immunity usually follows tularemia. If tularemia goes untreated, symptoms last one to four weeks, may continue for months. Now, how we can prevent the tularemia? Avoidance of exposure to biting and blood sucking insects is very important. Proper measures should be taken to avoid the biting by the uh, blood sucking insects and by the ticks. Approaches to vaccine development being evaluated. Prophylaxis has not proved effective, and some early treatment can prevent the 
condition. So this all we talked about the treatment. If untreated, mortality rate is high. If proper treatment done, it, 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 it considerably decreased the mortality rate to even less than one person. So proper treatment management has a good prognosis and we can try to prevent by preventing or avoiding the bite by the uh, blood sucking insects by taking some precautions if we can try but usually these precautions are not very uh, effective and not very helpful in preventing. So that concludes our topic of tularemia in which we talked in detail about all the aspects of the condition. Thank you for watching Scardia Doctor.